It's Monday, May 6, 2024. Happy Monday to you. We have a lot of stuff to get to. Updates from the tornadoes and flooding in Texas, Oklahoma, and a couple of pieces of information from our missing cases playlist. This podcast is rated for a mature audience only. If you are under 18 years old, this content is not for you. Thank you for visiting us. There's plenty of other content on YouTube for you to watch. Have a great day. All content not created by the blue-haired bingo babe, that's me, belongs to its original creator. It is used to substantiate, augment, or exemplify this author's content. It is used under Title 17, Section 107 of U.S. Code, governing fair use for news, education, and critique. Before we get into anything heavy or sad or anxiety producing, I just need to give credit to the videographer who caught this shot while rescuing some people in flooded Texas. Props to you for a sharp eye. As far as I know, that armadillo was not rescued, although he may have been helped up onto the porch, but that's just a speculation. Let's get into the rest of these stories. It has been a very busy weekend, as most of you will know, with missing child cases. But there are other things going on in the southern part of the United States and the southern Midwest. So let's start with the crying baby, so to speak. Let's start with Texas, who is currently experiencing tornadoes and flooding on an epic proportion. This is not, as you might expect, the Louisiana Bayou. This is... Texas, Liberty County, Texas to be exact, and we're just going to go on a little ride along and watch as two of the Texas game warden boats rescue this Navy veteran and another family and their pets. And this is the clip from where I got the armadillo shot. Again, thank you very much to News 18 for providing the footage and catching that awesome shot of the armadillo as well as rescuing these people and their animals. This Navy veteran has a son and a daughter in two other branches of the service, so as he tells the reporter, they have all the bases covered, all puns intended. These shots are from the aftermath where the Navy veteran was interviewed. However, that big boy, that big gray dog, that is a gray Great Dane. And he was in the other boat when the rescues happened. There was a little shuffling around trying to figure out where to put the dogs and who could fit where. Great Danes run at a minimum females of 120 pounds. Males can be 30 to 40 pounds heavier. So that was a big boy. And in rescuing them, they had to figure out how to keep the dogs calm and quiet. And Great Danes are known for being gentle giants anyway. But there was a feisty little bulldog who was not having any of this water business, let alone a boat ride. We're coming up on the second rescue. The Navy veteran is already in one of the boats, and they're trying to figure out how to thread through this um, spot and see if maybe they can get the people down the boat, uh, down the ramp from the home, and they decide they can't, so they go round to the place where there is a deck on this home. As you can see, as we as we motored by. There was all of the winter, next winter's wood for heating the home, sitting piled up, covered, ironically enough, to protect it from rain, but it's now flooded, and those people don't have dry wood, at least today, to heat their home in the winter of 2024-2025. Hopefully, you know, everything dries out and they will be able to heat their home. But these are just some of the things that you, even though you plan ahead and you try and be self-sufficient, you can't anticipate a flood like this. We'd like to thank the Texas Game Wardens for rescuing these dogs and their human friends. 
and now we're going to move on to Oklahoma. These next two clips are from the perspective of people on the ground who were fortunate enough to not be badly affected, although the Arms family, which is our first clip, their 90-year-old mother's uh, curiosity store or resale store was totally destroyed and you'll see bits of that I've done in camera editing so we'll have some somewhat abrupt scene changes. These next two creators have between the two of them bumping a million subscribers so they don't need my help getting the word out but I will give you some information about a bank fund that has been set up to help the hardest hit city in the area of Oklahoma that received hit after hit after hit, including this little town, from tornado after tornado after tornado. If you would like to help, I will give you the information at the end. Here we go. Multi-million dollar business. I mean, it just, tornado ripped through it, but everything looks good here. Less than a mile from it, though. All right, you guys, there's just there's just not much at all that I can do here. It's too muddy, too messy. We got everything put up as best we can for now. We're still missing a baby donkey and probably not going to find that baby. But I've got too much equipment sitting here to not utilize. The problem is I can't get it out right now, so there's no way I can drag this stuff out of here across that creek. I'm kind of waiting on the creek to go down, but I've got friends in town who, lots of friends, personal, close friends, best friends, whose buildings are destroyed, whose homes are in shambles, and uh, I've got the per perfect piece of equipment here, so I'm at least going to get this thing fueled up, get it down by the creek. As soon as it gets down low enough, my buddy that's got the bulldozer that's been helping me on my neighbor's property, they own a liquor store in town, and it got smashed, and he owns a wrecker service. So he's gonna bring one of his rollbacks and at least get me to town with this and we can start helping people. So we'll see. Well, the creek's too deep still. I just, it's not safe to cross. It's just, uh, I don't know how much mud and debris piled up over there. I drove out in here got up to where water was coming onto the onto the cab pretty good and I still hadn't quite hit the deepest part. It just sucks because freedom's right there. <laughs> my only other option is to drive this thing across my neighbor's pasture and get out, but it's about a mile drive to where somebody could where we could load it up. It's too muddy to take a trailer across the pasture, so I, I can't I can't sit here and do nothing. Alright, on to plan B. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is gonna take a minute. But we're going to get there. Merch building's good. A ride's here. Let's load this thing up. voice over me I'm going to give you a little commentary where those bullards are and where the friend of Dan's is moving debris that is adjacent to him the back wall of his business it's the only thing left standing and only a portion of it 
And when you think about farmers and some of the bigger channels that you see on YouTube going out and buying this kind of equipment to um, shape their land according to the needs of their livestock and their homestead, maybe you think that that's an extravagance. Maybe you think that it's not fair or right for YouTube subscribers and viewers to be paying for that kind of equipment through super chats and donations and so on and so forth. However, just look at this scene and realize that Dan lives just outside of this town and he did what he had to do to get his farm equipment to the town to help not only his friend and his mother-in-law, but other people in the town to the best of his ability all day long. Be careful. What do you think? So that is our post office. Holy cow. What else in Emily? Mouse pad was on the floor. Oh my gosh. So OG and E is uh that's our uh power company. They are making us hurry up and get everyone out. Um, like immediately, buildings are starting to collapse, I guess, so we're gonna have to hurry up and get out. Dusty is trying to get all of his bison meat out of here uh, because it's obviously uh, very expensive and we need to get that taken care of. So we're fixing to leave. Hey, Mama. Sorry we can't find your baby. I just don't think she's gonna be coming back. You got Bree. You gonna adopt Bree for us? Bree need a mama, hmm? I'm sorry, I know you're sad. Daniel went on to tell us that the only loss they had was a new donkey a baby. I don't, I think it's only maybe a few weeks old and in the storm it was lost. Next, let's go to Walker Farm and see Mr. Walker, who drove three hours and one minute, he will tell us, to get to Sulphur, Oklahoma, to help. The um, Expo Center, and they said they could use the help on a brush crew today. So they have their excavators. Sean um, has his uh, skid steer. Daniel has his excavator. And they're going to go behind a, another crew, which I'm helping, um, drag limbs. So we've got chainsaws that are about ready to come in here, start cutting stuff, dragging it out and uh, getting it to the curb. That way um, it can all be hauled off for the homeowner. So that's the plan. We'll be working here all day. Um, luckily, some people I know to work with, so it's looking good. So we're walking through, uh, going to the next house. We ran into our buddy Brandon. Um, he's been down here working off and on for what, what, every, every day. Every, every since it started, we've been here. We, we went in and got some rest and stuff, but 
things are looking up, it's a lot easier now that, that there's tons of people that's come in and started helping like, like y'all. And it's, it's so shocking how many people have come all over the world. Yes. And a lot of, a lot, lot of valuable stuff in here. So Brandon's doing his job keeping the riffraff out, anybody from looting and stuff like that. So th th that's the deal. I was really, really shocked how many people actually shows up to a disaster zone just to steal. And, and, and the first night, it was kind of free for all because we didn't have no help here. I mean, we just had our local agencies. But the second night, I was able to kind of pin down and we made a couple of rests and rest uh, one last night before I left. But it just... It's crazy what uh, brings out the, the bad. The, the low of the lowest yeah. to, to do that. I mean, they've already lost their homes and, you know, some of these, this, there's a lot of elderly people that live over in this area and it's going to be rough on to recover. Yeah. So along with the bad, though, it has brought out the good. There's a lot of people that have asked, how do you give? Where do you give? How can I help? And there's one site that's set up um, local with a local bank that the local guys are endorsing. It's First Bank. Yeah, it is Bank First. Bank First. Uh, and actually, uh, Gary's going to leave a link, but it's bankfirst.bank slash sulfur. And uh, let me click on it and see what it actually says here, and I'll show you. Uh, it served it. And that was another deal. The cell tires went down and we didn't have service. Um, it's uh, That's what it's going to look like, rebuilding sulfur. Um, and that's bank first. If there's anything else out there, we have no clue on. I know if you donate to bank first, it will be coming to our community. There you go. So if you guys want to, um, I'm going to leave the link down in the description. It'll be right at the very top. Uh, if you guys want to help out, then you'll be able to do it that way. And uh, a big thanks to Brandon, though. I know he's been working overtime yeah. trying to help these people out down here. We're just doing what we can, but um, it takes everybody to help out. Yeah, it's going to take, it's going to be months. Before, I mean, it never looked the same, like, say, downtown. Historic. I mean, it's been there over a hundred years, and it was just coming back, and uh, it's gone now, yeah. and uh, it, it's crazy. But there's only been that we know of is there's been 30 hurt, and uh, there's been one casualty, and we we found them the next morning. Wow, that's a miracle. When you look at this place, and there's only one casualty, um, that really is a miracle. Yeah. So, I mean, it was. Uh, it's hard to describe it, not unless you're here. Yeah. It, it's crazy. So, as always, though, uh, we're going to keep working and cleaning up, and. Um, if you guys want to give, check out the link down in the description. And so, too, the link will be in the show notes in the description box below. Now let's turn our attention to our missing cases. We have two updates. The first is little Aaliyah Torres. I brought you an update yesterday, and I'm bringing you a further update today. While little Aaliyah has not yet been located, I have some good news. Quote, I promise that the FBI will be with Clovis, that's Clovis, New Mexico, the community where little Aaliyah was abducted from, until we find Aaliyah and we find the inv individual or individuals responsible for these horrific acts, Raul Buhanda, special agent in charge of FBI Albuquerque Division, said during a news conference. And to Mr. Raul, if I have mispronounced your name, please forgive me. Last update for today on the Sebastian Rogers case. Another prayer vigil has been scheduled for May 19th, 2024, and that will begin at 6 p.m. It's being held at Long Hollow Church, and you can find all that information on this Facebook page. This is the one that I'm told from conversation between Justin on TikTok and the uh, spokesperson for Seth that Seth belongs to and Seth is primarily active in. I don't know anything more than that because I have not been watching Sebastian's case that much over the weekend. There were scheduled videos and missing person updates that occupied most of my time. Add to that some buggy editing software and I feel a lot like this armadillo over the weekend. Too many videos to produce, too much uploading, too much editing. My head is literally swimming. So with that, I will leave you. We're going to forego the usual outro and I'll just say thank you for this just in. I've always wanted to say that and I can't think of a better case to say it about. Literally as I was starting to process today's updates 
this something in my head said double check this news story was published about an hour ago out of Amarillo KFDA TV missing 10 month old girl in New Mexico found alive suspect in custody and the story is by Chelsea Collingsworth and the update was about an hour ago Lubbock Texas 10 month old Aaliyah Maria Torres has been found alive according to the FBI Albuquerque division law enforcement officials say a suspect is in custody and more details will follow Aaliyah was missing since Friday afternoon Clovis police provided an update in the case saying her mother and another woman were found shot dead and her sister was located injured with a gunshot wound in a park just north of Clovis New Mexico I brought you that update yesterday when they identified the mother the sister was brought to Lubbock Hospital and the suspect has not been identified and then the Clovis police oh sorry this is jumping the Clovis police released the following statement through a collaborated law enforcement effort 10 month old Ilya Maria Torres has been located and a suspect has been taken into custody baby Ilya had has been taken to a local area hospital as a precautionary measure the Clovis Police Department would like to thank all agencies involved in this investigation that worked tirelessly to reach this conclusion we will release more details at a later time <clears throat> and then it just gives um, updates on previous coverage this is fabulous news so happy for little Aaliyah and her family it just goes to show you when you get that little nagging kick in your gut that says check one more thing check one more time look one more place once in a while it pays off so thanks again I really appreciate your patience all the way through God bless you see you real soon